Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combouzier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities, Inc. Today's webinar fo uh, features West Haven Gold Corp. West Haven is a gold-focused exploration company advancing the high-grade uh, discovery on the Shovel Nose Project in Canada's newest gold district, the Spences Bridge Gold Belt. West Haven controls 37,000 hectares with four 100% owned gold properties spread along this underexplored belt. Today, I have with me on the webinar, Gareth Thomas, the president, CEO, and director, and Peter Fischel, the exploration manager at West Haven. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first part, Gareth and Peter will provide an update on West Haven, and we'll be discussing the results from the initial mineral resource estimate and presenting the 2022 exploration and drill program at the Shovel Nose Gold property. And then in the second part of the webinar, we'll take your questions live. So please submit them at any point using the chat feature and we'll get to them during the Q&A session. To start, we'll handle the disclosures and then get into the presentation. So for West Haven, there may be some forward looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to a cautionary note on page two of the West Haven corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for West Haven specific disclosures. So now I'll turn it over to Gareth and Peter to update you on West Haven and what you have to look forward to with the company. Thank you very much, uh, Taylor. I'm just going to start the screen share here. Hey. There we are. Hopefully that's uh, trying something slightly new today. We're going to be going through our uh, verified deck here, which I haven't done, so bear with me, but it should be a little more entertaining than, than usual and uh, more interactive. Uh, thanks for the intro there, Taylor. As mentioned, my name is Gareth Thomas. I'm the president, CEO, and director of West Haven Gold. And uh, today, we're I'm happy to be joined uh, by Peter Fischel, our exploration manager. I'm sure a lot of you are are probably sick of uh, hearing me me talk. So uh, it's nice to have Peter here to to tell you what we've been up to. So I'll start here by uh, Taylor's gone through that there. Uh, some forward looking statements. Might be making some of those. So uh, the idea here is I'll go through our uh, update on our on our initial maiden resource here and and a few other things and uh, then I'll, I'll I'll let Peter uh, or get Peter to go through what we're up to as of now and uh, drilling's being ongoing here for about ten days now for this year so lots of exciting stuff happening there um, yeah the initial maiden resource we put out on January tenth um, very uh, big milestone for West Haven that we're uh, excited to announce we have a, a little over a million ounces of gold uh, combined in both the classifications of the indicated and the inferred. You'll see there we have 841,000 ounces indicated at just under a two and a two and a half grams per ton gold equivalent, and uh, that's seven times our cutoff grade. So we're uh, quite pleased with that number there. We have an additional 277,000. Uh, ounces, 277,000 ounces of uh, in the inferred category, just under a gram gold equivalent. And you'll see there our metallurgy is uh, quite good as well, non-refractory and, and amenable recovery by standard industry process flow sheet. Um, and we'll be touching a little bit about the, the belt in general here, but primarily be talking about our flagship shovel nose uh, project. And, uh, and a Point to make there, uh, insiders here of, of West Haven own 25% of the shares outstanding. Uh, a little more on that, on our, our share structure here, a little over 126 million shares outstanding. Uh, we're at a market cap of uh, a little under 58 million today. Working cap is, um, is is quite good at the moment. We're a little under 4 million, which is uh, doesn't seem like a lot to many, but that uh, gets us a long way for where we are and location-wise and our drill costs. So, uh, yeah, we're we're good and working cap for uh, for for quite a while there, and it could go quite a while. And I will mention there our analyst coverage. Uh, obviously, Taylor on the on the uh, call here uh, has a target at us uh, for a dollar fifteen a share buy rating and. Uh, Craig Stanley from Raymond James at $1.10 a share as an outperform rating. Uh, some of our institution and funds, uh, plethora of precious metals, 
from um, um, they've been up with us for for quite some time now. A great uh, uh, shareholder to have. Then we we had the likes of Mark Franklin uh, Gold Two Thousand um, get involved here about uh, about a year ago. And as mentioned there, we uh, own about twenty five percent amongst ourselves here at uh, the management and, and directors of uh, West Haven. A little bit about the history. This is a relatively well. It was actually an old slide that we kind of reinvented here, but it, it gives people a little bit of perspective of the area who aren't overly familiar with this southwestern British Columbia area on the Spences Bridge Gold Belt. You'll see our shovel nose for reference there down to the uh, southeast here. And as you move up our Prospect Valley and our Skunka and our Skunka North, uh, you'll see this white outline here. That's the Highland Valley Copper Mine, which is about uh, 30 kilometers as a crow flies from our Skunka North, largest open pit mine in Canada. And uh, of course, you have the Fraser River coming up here where it uh, splices off to the Thompson up here. And uh, Fraser keeps heading up there to the north. And uh, first uh, first gold, uh, Placer gold, uh, was found right in this area, just coming off the Nikomin River in 1857. And this drew an estimated 20,000 plus prospectors to this area uh, shortly after the, the San Francisco gold rush of, 19, of 1849. And this little town, I'm sure some of you have been through it. It's a bit of a ghost town. Well, I shouldn't say ghost town. There's a few things there, but this was the largest town north of San Francisco and west of Chicago back in these days. So um, a, a pretty significant uh, uh, area and, and really was was what uh, became a BC after this this gold rush. And it's our uh, our belief that a lot of this load source of this placer gold has you know, come from the Spences Bridge gold belt um skunka skunka north perhaps uh um but yeah that's it's just a neat little uh you know reference for this area and a bit about the history another uh more more zoomed in look at the belt there on the on the right you'll see our projects which i mentioned there and as taylor mentioned there we have a little over thirty-seven thousand hectares on this belt and uh within these four properties and uh mainly be touching on the shovel nose today but we are looking to uh do work we did some work on our prospect valley recently and uh we're looking to get up to skunka creek this year and uh skunka north we will be doing some work there for sure and um yeah so lots going on here and uh the about 86 percent of this remaining belt in this other color the lighter or maybe be darker beige depending on how you look at it is owned by a group called talisker and uh Anything within five kilometers of all all four of our properties, we have a two and a two and a half percent NSR, which which is a, it equates to about seventy thousand hectares. Now we'll start getting into this uh, relatively new thing for me here, but it, it's another uh, neat way for people to to get a better look at the area here and really how close we are. Here's the the Coquihalla Highway. Not sure, Peter. Are you able to see my mouse as I move here? Oh yeah, yeah, I can yeah, see okay. it. Yeah, you're moving up the uh, Coquihalla Highway here. Uh, major power line comes right up here north of the property. We have another power line that comes right up through our almost through our south zone here. So pretty, uh, pr pretty. I, know, I sound like a broken record how much we talk about this, but um, you know, location is is very key here, and it's a unique advantage for you know a company in our position. Uh, million ounces off a highway. It's 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 a nice position to be in. Just move along here as we actually uh, zoom into the south zone. You'll see the south zone here where our resource is, and we're looking sort of due north here. And uh, so our strikes being sort of sort of down in this area, uh, moving all the way up, uh, imagine four kilometers along this line, which I'll show you here shortly. But uh, very, uh, you know, rolling hills area. We're up there working right now. Not a, not a huge amount of snowfall. Um, a lot of clear cuts. There's over 400 uh, kilometers of roads in this on our property alone. So um, lots of good infrastructure and, and obviously close to the uh, city of Merritt, about a 30 minute drive uh, from the from Merritt right to our, our drill right now. Here's another look where we come in. Now you're looking south as we uh, looking out over south. Uh, Coca Hall would just be down over here. A uh, little village of Brookmere just down over here. And um, yeah, it gives you another kind of look of the area there. Looks slightly different uh, today, I, I will say, due to the uh, forest fire, uh, devastating fire of last year. So it uh, looks a little bit different on a third uh, western part of the property. 
And uh, here we'll have a, a zoom right into the self zone and our, our discovery hole here in uh, SN 1814, where we drilled the 17.7 meters at 24 and a half grams per ton gold and 107 grams per ton silver. Um, another 50 meters up, we drilled this 1901, which is arguably our best hole to date, uh, 12.66 meters of 39 grams per ton gold. And uh, may, maybe with that, Peter, Peter uh, as we're kind of looking at um, how this was discovered, but maybe we can just uh, give a, a, a brief, uh, if you want to just touch on where we were drilling over in this area and how it how it became to this discovery hole. and uh, or, or we can wait for another slide. It's up to you. But... Uh, if you want to touch on yeah sure i can start here um yeah it was um well back in the spring of 2017 we had that uh, epithermal expert uh jeff Edenquist up on the project and uh he recommended uh, uh doing a whole bunch of uh, ground uh, magnetics to help uh define um, man uh, magnetic uh, linear features that may be associated with zones of upflow um in an epithermal system and also doing a bunch of um, uh, terrace spec work um, using the um, infrared spectroscopy uh, to kind of uh, look at the clay mineralogy and kind of map out again where there may be slightly higher areas of paleo temperatures where there might be uh, signs of uh, upflow in an epithermal system. Um, so uh, just down in, uh, uh, to the northwest or down where the trees are, um, uh, we drilled uh, a few holes there starting in late 2017. And um, we started hitting, uh, hitting some... Um, um, interesting looking uh, quartz veins, a meter scale banded quartz veins, very epithermal looking, which we really hadn't seen before. Uh, we started doing some more follow up drilling in early 2018. Um, we had assumed we were testing a, um, a northeast trending um, a magnetic feature. We thought we had a north, uh, sorry, um, yeah, northeast trending um, uh, zone of upflow. Um, but then as we stepped out along it, we realized we actually have a northwest trending uh, zone, of, zone of veining, and we were rapidly getting into the roots of the system. So we kind of um, uh, reoriented the, uh, the drill and uh, figured we need to get shallower on the system. Um, from my experience in Russia, um, I, I spent uh, 12 years chasing epithermals in Russia. From what I saw in there, I could tell from what we had here, we were getting into the roots of a strong epithermal system. So we came back with hole 1814 and um, started drilling um, to the northeast uh, to test this northwest turning um, vein zone and uh, at a much shallower level. Um, so, and that was our first significant bonanza hit and uh, in vein zone one there. And um, uh, so we kind of knew we had a preferred horizon where we were getting significant gold mineralization um, along a, um, a vein zone uh, trending northwest now. And, um, you know, subsequently with all the drilling we've been doing, you know, with this vein zone one now, we've chased for um, just over four kilometers now. So including uh, through the uh, zone one here, which uh, uh, cell zone, I mean. And um, which carries, you know, the bulk of the um, uh, the mineralization. Um, so we've been doing uh, with the drilling over the last few years. So, um, so yeah. So um, yeah, there's a plan map right now. Um, the, you can see the faint red right there. That's our vein zone one, trending northwest for just over four kilometers now. Uh, you can yeah. see the towards the south end there, southeast end. There's our um, our, our pits uh, based on the resource drilling uh, we've done around vein zone one. Um, around that pit, proposed pit, we also have a couple other vein zones. Uh, vein zone two shown in blue, and then vein zone three in green there. So, uh, yeah, um, and you can see the, uh, the there's our block model. Um, oh, jumped ahead there a bit on you, you Peter. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's a good point to uh, now yeah, continue on here, I guess. Sure. Um, so kind of laid yeah. out the groundwork there, so. Yeah, and well, uh, yeah, thanks for the, uh, for, for letting get people know how that uh, came about there. And uh, yeah, just touch on this uh, resource. I think we get back into it here shortly. You can uh, read through the numbers there. I won't read through it all. I think that the big thing here is where, you know, 75% of this is in the indica indicated classification, as I mentioned there. Uh, we're seven times uh, higher than the cutoff grain, which is, you know, excellent potential for for potential economics here. And um, yeah, I, I've already mentioned this many times where we're located near grid power and, and everything. So, um, yeah, and that's this will be growing here. And as Peter mentioned there, there's the, the vein zone one in red, which goes all the way up to uh, the Franz, which is the elk crop we discovered in August of 2020. And you have this little magenta um piece here which we'll touch on shortly as well which we we are calling vein zone four at the moment it's relatively newly discovered then you get this vein zone two and uh vein zone three as well 
And I will just have a little look at the, the pit here itself. And uh, you can see, I don't know how easy it is to see there, but the green is, is 0.35 to one gram and the yellow is one gram to three and a half or three grams. And the red is uh, greater than three here. You just see as you take off the, uh, the lower grade there, you, you're still at a, with a very good uh, it, chunk of mineralization there. Then of course, if you go right into the high grade, uh, nice looking high grade uh, part there into this pit. Let's see here. And there we go. We have a, a better look of vein zone one here. So this is this sort of uh, copper looking uh, feature here that runs all the way up here. And, and there's that magenta part I talked about, which is our vein zone four. But this gives you a good idea of, uh, you know, most of our drillings being sort of focused in and around the south zone where we have a million ounces. We really like what we're seeing up here now at, at FMN, um, a big gap in here, which we haven't drilled yet. Then, of course, you get to France where we have this high grade outcrop that comes to surface and it's uh, still open to the northwest here as well. So um, lots more just to look at just looking at along here. We think we're going to add. Uh, you know, greatly to this this story just by, you know, focusing the drill more up and around this area, not to mention the the regional uh, prospectivity of this project as well, which were uh, a lot of boots on ground last year. We had um, lots of uh, lots of new discoveries, which we're following up on and hopefully to, to get those uh, targets to uh, drill delineated and, and into drill targets here pretty quick. Uh, just being cognizant of time here, um, I won't go into all these holes, but some, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty nice intercepts here for the south zone, as we've, uh, um, you know, talked about before. You get the 41, uh, almost 42 meters of 8 grams there. And, uh, you know, then you get a 1.65 meters of 175 grams per ton gold, you know, big bonanza grade. And um, then we'll take a look here at the, the FMN. We have... Uh, a few more holes here that we will update this with here shortly. But Franz, this is about uh, three kilometers from the south of the south zone where you're getting 7.78 meters of almost 15 grams per ton gold. Um, nice silver kick there as well. Then, of course, uh, 161 was our big hole uh, of last year in the FMN. And, uh, but we have three or four or five pretty good holes. And uh, we're, we're awaiting assay here for about another dozen or so uh and maybe more holes to come from fmn as well here and that's where we're currently drilling which uh peter will uh, touch on here shortly and um yeah just to remind people of the the size of this property i mean this is a you know a 17,000 hectare property that uh you know is relatively underexplored but we've gone back to basics here here last year we we did a big silt program um like i said boots on ground we had uh, geos out prospecting mapping some really interesting targets down in this neck of the woods um, some of our highest silts to date possibly on the belt coming from down in here and uh, up and around here and some nice hydrothermal breccia and this these curtain and brookmere um, uh, we'll call them zones here but targets out here as well then of course romeo um, drilling we've had we've had a few holes drilled over in romeo and we're seeing what what appears to be upper levels of a uh, of an epithermal, lots of lots of uh, pathfinder elements, but uh, haven't hit anything big yet. But there's certainly something going on here. Lots of good geochemistry, and uh, we will be following up on a lot of these areas, and, and including just immediately along strike in here. We have lots of interesting things that were unearthed uh, in our field program last year as well. So main focus at the moment is FMN um, as we're currently drilling there, but also a lot more to to um, to look at here. I've talked about the, the majority of uh, this here. Um, I won't uh, won't keep keep uh, banging the drum here, but uh, uh, obviously year round exploration as we're drilling there right now. And uh, here's another look at our uh, uh, our pit, our resource, um, the Alpine Lear uh, Tower Zone, where we first really were focused uh, back in the 2012, 13, 14. We were. Uh, 15, we are focused here, kind of drilling half gram material over 50 meters. Um, obviously, slowly got down here into the meat and potatoes, but we're starting to see more as we, we drill more up into this area. And um, Peter, maybe maybe good time to talk about the the alpine on these uh, vein zone that I think um, obviously is 
being extended up here and, and the second vein zone as well. Maybe I'll let you just discuss even this 265 meters of half gram to put a little color on, on that would be good. Yeah, sure. So we got um, in the cell zone area, um, we have um, three vein zones um, that we defined so far. Um, uh, but uh, some of the gold is actually in sort of these um, enveloping uh, areas of lower grade of these veinlets. Um, that's more tied up in the um, inferred uh, resource. So, um, so in, in the indicator is um, is the higher grade gold mineralization um, in the vein zones that we can follow from hole to hole. But also, we get these um, halos uh, around the um, the vein zones um, with the lower grade, um, yeah. but um, that add to the uh, bulk tonnage uh, potential that we see at um, at South Zone there. Um, at Alpine, that's sort of um, more, um, actually it's more vein zone two that continues through um, through Alpine. Um, in the Lear area, that's more uh, zone three there. So so as you can follow zone two uh, northwest all the way up into the tower area, it kind of looks like it's actually uh, getting closer again towards vein zone one, which blows right through, you know, tower FMN in France. And uh, just northwest of tower, we think maybe this vein zone two kind of merges again with uh, vein zone one. So uh, vein zone two is um, is generally lower grade, but in the south zone area, it can have significant grades. Um, like whole, um, I'm still thinking of whole 1910, where we had like uh, what, 50 meters of, of five grams. Um, so that's uh, quite a significant hit in vein zone two. It's more of a sheeted veinlet zone, um, while vein zone one, you do get meter scale veins up to about 20 or so meters um, wide in the uh, south zone area and also up in the FMN. Um, and, and again, Lear is more of uh, vein um, zone three. Um, again, um, more of a sheeted veinlet zone, um, but it, it can contain uh, meter scale veins at, uh, as well. And uh, uh, zone three is still open. Um, we're going to be plugging away at that at some point this uh, season again. So, um, yeah, we, we've traced it over, what, uh, 0.8 kilometers, uh, zone three, the, the green, bit of green you see there. Yeah, and it's still open to the north-northwest into the Lear area. So, um, yeah. Uh, so up in the, uh, just a quick uh, uh, a bit of the history again, uh, the, the tower area, that's sort of the historic, um, or much of the older historic drilling going back to 2011 was, was conducted. Um, that's actually, as it turns out, where zone two actually outcrops. So, um, you know, people talk about the, I don't know, the, the thick overburden we see at South Zone, but it, that's not typical for the uh, Chavanel's project. Um, we do see in places that the vein zones outcropping. Uh, at Tower, we see vein zone two outcropping. Um, at France, we have vein zone one outcropping. So, um, yeah, and generally as you go northwest, um, the, um, the glacial till cover uh, thins considerably. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, so we do see, the, again, the outcrop at Tower. In the FMN area, your overburden there is, you know, no more than 20, 30 meters uh, thick. So, um, yeah, which is a good thing because we do see uh, mineralization at FMN. So um, FMN, we kind of, um, it's, it was originally uh, just a soil geochem anomaly extending out from Tower northwest, and we kind of, by July of 2020, we realized um, between Tower and uh, South Zone, it's all, um, we, we can still trace our two main vein zones, uh, zones one and two, right through that area. You know, projecting a long strike uh, northwest, uh, we realized, yeah, you know, this thing is still open and potentially, you know, a kilometer scale uh, structure uh, continuing uh, to the northwest. And uh, back in early August, we kind of followed this trend and um, looked at some, uh, at the geological maps and we thought we saw some of this um, um, rhyolite, our preferred host rock, happening in the Franz area. So it, in early August, it was a slow day at the Korshak, and we sent one of our loggers out. And within a few days, um, in early August, that he found the Franz outcrop, you know, which locally was running up to 50 grams at surface. So, uh, so we kind of realized, yeah, this is all one, you know, four kilometer long structure. Um, and then we had um, this kind of a, a gap uh, between Tower and Franz. Uh, the historic FMN area, which re originally was just a, um, a soldier coming anomaly, and we just started plugging away, uh, continuing to trace northwest from the tower area where we get vein zone one, uh, and we kept uh, following this thing. And then um, by uh, 2020, um, we started uh, getting some interesting numbers and in holes uh, 139, uh, 145, and and just kept um, uh, plugging away. And um, that culminated with the drilling of hole 161, where we got, um, what was it, 15.97 meters of a 9.15 uh, grams gold. So um, th that was a bit of a deeper hit at a, closer to the 1200 meter level. But um, since then, we realized we got mineralization coming right up to the top of bedrock, right up to almost 1400 meter level. So, uh, so uh, 
you know, and within with the minimal uh, glacial till cover, unlike Sausam, which you know it does have a bit more up to 100 meters thick, but um, but here, so we um, we're seeing you know mineral, mineralization coming right up uh, to bedrock. You know, um, the true widths um, thicken as you go uh, up dip uh, near surface up to about 40 meters or so with the current drilling we're seeing. So we have potentially another you know um, open pit uh, situation happening here. So this is a, a really intriguing um, this um, uh, this FMN target. So. Um, um, we currently have one drill there, and we'll be uh, uh, drilling this off on 50-meter uh, sections. Um, that should be an, uh, a, a tight enough spacing to, at some point later this year, maybe potentially coming up with a, a potential resource, um, inferred to indicated um, resource, um, um, similar to what we're, we've been doing at, at South Zone. Um, so, yeah, so this is certainly um, shaping up to be an interesting uh, target here. So, so again, FMN, where we're getting some interesting numbers, we're, you know, that's... Um, about 1.5 to two kilometers northwest of the in-pit resource um, at, at South Zone. So, um, yeah, so definitely um, something is shaping up there. Um, so with the initial uh, drilling there, we're going to be stepping out towards the southeast, back towards Tower, and then uh, and then stepping out uh, northwest to um, help uh, figure out what's happening in that gap there. So, um, yeah, so that's right. we're going to try to do some more um, geophysics uh, to help figure out what's going on in, in the gap as well. So we want to eventually kind of push this thing more northwest again uh, towards um, towards France. So um, yeah, so it's certainly um, yeah something uh, we'll be busy uh, on at uh, at the FMN target there for sure. Uh, maybe maybe, the maybe Peter, I'll just on that note, uh, just let uh, in terms of the DC resistivity, how we we did some pretty. Uh, sparsely spaced lines there back in 2020, but uh, maybe just talk about the veining we're seeing at FMN in terms of the intensity and how it does correlate with the uh, resistivity, which is a, you know, we're hopefully it's a valuable tool here. Maybe just touch on that slightly while we sure. we kind of end it here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so DC resistivity, it's it's, it's basically uh, the same as as an IP survey, um, but here we're just focused on um, mapping out the resistivity features. Um, and as it turns out, uh, with, um, um, with the, the, anything with a high silica content is very resistive. So um, including um, uh, the quartz vein, quartz veins, veinlet zones, and the silicified wall rock that we're seeing. Um, so uh, we've done this over South Zone. It maps out the vein zones beautifully. Um, and we're now, uh, we've done some reconnaissance lines uh, through, um, through the FMN area. It, it worked incredible. Uh, you know, and so quite, a, and it's fairly detailed. So it's um, certainly a useful tool um, for mapping out um, uh, the, the vein zones. And at um, at FMN, where we don't have much overburn cover, and we see this intense veining coming right up uh, to the top of bedrock there. So this uh, this DC resistivity serving, it's it's certainly uh, quite useful and quite critical in uh, defining and our, our vein zone and helping with uh, targeting uh, our, our vein zone one in the FMN area. So um, yeah, so this. And so the coming months or so, we'll be uh, um, doing some more geophysics to help um, help with the targeting at, at FMN. So um, certainly a, an important tool um, uh, for um, for mapping out these uh, electrically electrically resistive uh, bodies of uh, veining and, and veinlets um, that we see in in, in vein zone one at, at FMN. So um, yeah, yeah, and, and here uh, just just ending on uh, a bit of an arm waiver here, but. But obviously, with that seventeen thousand hectares, as you you saw, nice from that that verify map there. The um, you know we've we're onto these. This is a little bit bigger now. This vein zone one, but uh, lots of regional targets on the outside here that we're we're working on uh, diligently to find try and find more of these. So um, uh, obviously, he Shikari is one uh, uh, one of the better minds in the world. But uh, there, we do see some uh, some you know like to share some similarities to that and what we're seeing, but uh, one day, hopefully. And uh, just up, some upcoming catalyst, as we were discussing here, we got uh, lots of results uh, due back from both FMN and our South uh, Zone expansion holes that didn't make it to the resource. And uh, we're at FMN now drilling uh, with one rig and we're looking to uh, to ramp up come springtime with, uh, with another rig and uh, lots of new um, lots of new targets to be testing here on the periphery and, and more regionally, which we will have some news out in the near future as well. Once we, we get all our data in and we can, uh, uh you know, really paint a, a good picture of what those targets look like and why we're, we're drilling those. So, um, 
yeah, with that, I think I'll stop sharing and uh, and open it up to some questions. Taylor, does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's perfect. So thank you very much, Gareth and uh, Peter. So now we'll turn to the Q&A portion of the webinar. Uh, just a reminder to everybody on the line that you can type in your questions to the chat box at any point. Uh, we've had quite a few uh, questions come in so far. Um, so I'll just kind of start going down the list here. Um, in terms of, um, I guess, looking forward, you know, you outlined some of the catalysts uh, just a moment ago. Um, you know, what, where do you see the company going kind of 2022, 2023? Um, and, you know, the, the drilling on uh, has started already. Um, you know, one of the questions was on, um, you know, have you contact or contracted drillers yet? And how much are you planning to drill uh, this year? Yeah, we um, we're we're using the same drill company we've used for for quite a few years now. Um, Titan Diamond Drilling. They've been they've been excellent uh, and know this property very well. They know the community well. So yeah, we've we've uh, contracted Titan and um, we we have gone a tender before in, in other years past here. But uh, just so people are aware, we're not. Uh, but but Titan has has continued to deliver and and like I said, a, a good group to work with. And this year, though we haven't uh, got a exact budget number in in our mind, the last uh, previous two years in, in 2020 we drilled 43,000 meters, um, and then last year we drilled just over 40,000 meters. I should add, despite being you know shut down for a month of of forest fires and another probably lost a month because of the flooding, but uh, so yeah, we certainly met met our goals there. And this year we're we're still um, still coming up with our budgets and we're kind of keeping our eye on this market and in, in what's going on, of course. Um, but yeah, we're looking at a minimum of 20,000 meters, uh, but that could go up as, you know, as, as high as 40,000, uh, possibly more. And we are hoping to drill Skunka this year as well at some point. Um, of, of course, a, a little bit depending on the uh, logistics of that. Obviously, the, the town of Lytton got... Uh, um, destroyed last year, a, a devastating fire there. So uh, that's where we, we usually would work out of. So we'll, uh, but we are looking to drill Skunka. Okay, great. Um, on the, the theme of drilling, uh, we have a question just wondering uh, if the cost of drilling has increased much or if you've seen much uh, insight on that. Yeah, like like everything, I think these days uh, with with inflation, and I mean not not to dwell on that, uh, prices have gone up a bit, but that was very much to be expected, just with kind of everything, fuel and uh, and diesel and everything kind of going up, but uh, nothing that's that's drastic. Where uh, you know we don't have helicopters, we don't have planes. We're um, a short drive from Merritt, uh, not not a long drive from Vancouver, so we're we're in a pretty good position that way, right off a of highway. So. Uh, costs are still, uh, you know, uh, very good for for drilling cost. Okay, and do you have a, a kind of a rough percentage of total expenditure that you that you allocate to, to drilling? Or? Yeah, I'd say probably about eighty five percent of our budget is on really on drilling at this point. Uh, uh, we drilled, like I said, forty thousand meters last year. We spent about nine. Uh, nine million was kind of our our budget for last year, so yeah, but a, a good chunk of that is is going towards the drill bit for sure. And I mean, like I said, we're we're still very much an exploration uh, story here. We're a drill bit story. We we really like our initial resource. Um, we think we 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 did a good job on that. I think we've de-risked this uh, certainly. Um, we're we're also working, uh, which we haven't you know announced much, but we we started environmental baseline work there last year as well. So we're doing a lot of the behind the, the in sort of just being uh, very proactive and uh, to, to get a lot of this work done as we know down the road uh, if this does become bigger than we well not not just if it becomes something in more development production we we want to get this stuff going and we've done that so um, that will be more more budget towards that but for the for the big chunk we'll still be drilling yeah okay great um so I have a question here, um, turning more towards the, the resource and, and that. Um, one of them is, uh, can you walk us through your choosing of the cutoff rate, uh, some insights into the pit design? Um, I will I will probably refrain from that as it's, um, yeah, I mean, we, in terms of the economics and how um, it, we, we obviously haven't 
done much on that in terms of the cutoff grade itself. Obviously, I, I will touch on that. We and I should maybe a good time to mention, I, and I mentioned it in our in our company webinar we did on January 10th that we will have an underground component of this resource out in the coming months. Uh, hopefully by uh, by April, I think is I think we got another couple months. We're not starting from scratch, obviously, for this uh, underground component, but that will be a, a, a very different cutoff grade for the underground component uh, and how we came about that. But but we're using a lot of the industry standard here, what's around us, uh, which which obviously isn't a lot. We're not in a in an area, but, you know, you can't really compare yourselves to Highland Valley Copper. It, it's a it's a different beast, obviously, uh, maybe one day or, or, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, a few you know, a few things in the, within the area, but that's just an industry. Um, and, and we're, you know, we're very, we're very happy with the resource, but it's also a very uh, defendable conservative resource. It's, it's, it's a very good, uh, you know, very good resource that we think is going to have very, really good economics. I, I will say that. Yeah. But the underground component will certainly be a much different cutoff and a much different grade. Um, but yeah, we'll, We'll uh, have that out, yeah, sometime in the spring is what we're uh, we're working on for that. Okay, great. Um, next question: um, Could uh, new new the new holes on the south zone add to the maiden resource? I'll I'll leave that for you, Peter. Um, well, we'll see more. Um, I expect will be more of a more of a conversion of the um, inferred to indicated. We may get more into the indicated category, but. There is going to be some uh, some additional ounces. Um, uh, the results are still coming in from holes we submitted last October. So, yeah, we're still um, we're still like, we're just get, you know getting in new numbers right now. So, uh, but yeah, we'll be get, getting some more inferred to indicated, and we, we may be getting some additional ounces. But yeah, uh, right now it's still um, it's still too soon to say how much. But uh, yeah. but but from from the drilling we did do to the northwest that didn't make it into the resource I I will say there's a lot more uh, things to be following up on there as well that look interesting. So we're hoping, yeah, when we'll get some of that news out when, when it comes. Uh, and I just on uh, just to clear that on the the sampling there, uh, big backlog in the Kamloops facility. So we're we've been actually getting some of our uh, most of our newer stuffs being going down right to North Vancouver, which is a much much shorter waiting time. So uh, samples are kind of staggered all around right now. Our, our assays, I should say, but um, yeah, we're due back. We're, we have quite a few due back here in the, in the coming uh, weeks, and uh, certainly by sort of mid February, we should have the majority of them back. But it was quite a backlog uh, just due to the the seasonal uh, activity up and around uh, BC. Great. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, after the south zone discovery, uh, you were looking to extend to the southeast, but ran into a fault. Uh, do you see any future possibility of picking up again to the southeast, or is that um, kind of shut off at this point? Uh, there may be, yeah, there may be some, um, yeah, there is some faulting that's complicating things, but um, that that trend, it, it, there's still some, you know, um, it's still um, it's still maybe alive further to you know southeast, so it's still um, it's still an area of interest. Um, it, it's a less of a priority now, um, based on what we're finding uh, to the northwest, but. Mm -hmm. uh, um, based on the um, some recent uh, stream sediment sampling, um, there's still some indications of something happening um, to the southeast. So, so yeah, it's, it's still it's still an area of interest, but um, not just not a priority right now. Potentially some uh, future uh, possibilities down there. We're we're we'll hope to poke <laughs> some holes there sometime this year. On uh, P Peter's being a bit uh, uh, quite about. We, we're hoping to poke some holes down there. We found some some as Peter mentioned. We haven't we haven't made it out. Uh, I mean, this is just just back to the basic stuff, but there's there's certain certainly some things that are adding up down there a bit further, just to the south of our Shylock, where we were drilling that zeolite. Uh, what was it last year? Or two years ago, we drilled two Shylock. Yeah, so well, there are there are some interesting things down there that have, that have uh, resurfaced. So um, still alive, but as Peter mentioned, we, we certainly have um, other uh, you know higher priorities right now. Right. Okay. And um, w with that, the drilling. Um, uh, has been ongoing at the FMN zone, uh, recently put out some results uh, from there. Um, have you completed uh, some of the holes um, at the new elevations that you were targeting yet? Well, we're, we're basically targeting right right up um, right up to uh, almost 1,400 meters. And yeah, yeah, you know, we are seeing mineralization. So um, 
I'm just waiting on assays now, but uh, but yeah, these shallower ele elevations uh, we're certainly at testing, and you know, you know, with with success. So um, yeah, based on what we've seen in core, but um, but yeah, um, we're still waiting on assays. So um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, so it's it's working out at, at FMN for sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um... Okay, question, I guess, on the more ESG front, do you overlap uh, with any First Nations land? Uh, if so, uh, what are the relationships like? Um, we, we are on uh, Crown land, but of course, uh, you know, that, 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 that we're in the territory of, uh, of, of a few bands. The, um, the Coldwater Indian Band would be the closest band to the Shovel Nose, and um, yeah, we do. We do lots of um, um, work with the cold water. We have about uh, eight, or about sorry, I should say about six members working for us currently, and another two from the Lower Nickel Indian Band. And uh, then there's a component of the cold water called the Ashkenam that does a lot of the preliminary field recon surveys there. Every time we we drill an area, they'll come up and do a sort of an arc survey there. So we're in good relations with. Um, with that particular uh, group, the Coldwater, which is a which is under under an umbrella called the CNA, which is about eight bands involved in that, and then there's another group called the um, the NNTC, which represents about five bands currently that we're in uh, talks with as well, and they do a lot up at the Elk uh, Elk Mine up with uh, Gold Mountain as well. So, yeah, very um, very good um, relations, but it's always ongoing, and you're always um, you know things are are changing i think for the better uh in in the province and i think it's um you know it's it's uh very important to be transparent to to not just uh, the first nations but the locals the the local communities and and really we're uh trying to get uh, everyone involved in the in the local communities as much as possible so yeah it's it's an on certainly an ongoing uh a, a relationship engagement and uh yeah it's something we uh you know we we uh certainly are, are uh, keen on. Great, okay. Um, so switching gears a bit, um, another question came in. Uh, lots of silver on the property uh, and in the resource uh, in the resource now. Any thought to selling a silver stream as a way of minimizing dilution and ramping up the drills? Yeah, I mean, we've, uh, we were, we were approached by a lot of, um, you know, groups right after our, our big discovery back in 2018, to be honest. And I think we've always sort of stuck to our um, our belief that this is, we're going to find more and more. It hasn't always, it hasn't always happened, you know, extremely quickly, but uh, these things can be drill intensive and, and take a bit of thinking, but uh, you know, at this point we're, we're, we're sticking to, uh, to, to keeping everything we can. We think this is going to be more valuable uh, keeping everything together as is. Um, so yeah, we, we do, um, the Osisco royalties does have a, a 2% royalty on the shovel nose at the moment, but we can buy back 1% of that for half a million. So it's certainly uh, a nice thing to have that 1%. And uh, it's nice to have a group like Osisco with the other 1%. So uh, at this point, um, yeah, no, not, not nothing in the works for, for that at the moment. And I will. I will say the the FMN is is looking uh, um, certainly more silver uh, rich than the South Zone as well. There's uh, it, there's more silver up in that area, and, and uh, but yeah, not not at this point, Taylor. Okay, great. Good, que good question though. Um, okay. Uh, one of the other questions we had is, um, I guess, looking. Uh, forward this year, what are you most concerned about that might derail your plans? I know you've dealt with quite a bit uh, over the last year. Maybe you've, how, what's your outlook like for this year? Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat that there, Taylor? I, I didn't. Uh... Uh, uh, just uh, what are you most concerned about that might derail your plans this year? Gosh, yeah. I mean, twenty twenty one was a bit of a. They threw a lot of things in that uh, that area and the, the local communities. Yeah, it was a tough year for um, for the for the people in that area for sure. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's in the rear view for for fires and floods and and whatnot. Um, yeah, I, I think we're we're feeling a lot more um, you know optimistic and and cheery this year in terms of uh, yeah. So I, I hopefully nothing is uh, is. Uh, 
Um, hopefully, hopefully those things are, are going to take a bit of a break. These these natural um, disasters, but uh, yeah, enough. Uh, at this point, we're we're hoping to go full steam ahead. Great. Okay. Um, I guess one more uh, geology question: um, What is the range of thickness of the veins, and how far apart are they? Um, well, okay, yeah. So um, we uh, we're seeing um, you know veins, you know millimeter, centimeter scale, up to meter scale. Um, at South Zone, they're up to in vein zone one, up to twenty meters wide. Um, uh, the recent drilling from the last fall at FMN, where you know there was a quartz breccia vein there, uh, twenty meters wide. Uh, so yeah, so up to about twenty meters. Well, it's kind of interesting because uh, that that twenty meters um, and other deposits I've worked on, like for example at Kupel in Russia, world class deposit, the, the widest vein there was twenty meters. <laughs> um, so, but um, um, but some of the vein zones are more sheeted vein lead zones, while some of the vein zones are more dominated by the meter scale veins. Uh, vein zone one. Um, for a good part of it, it, it's these larger meter scale um, veins that you can follow from hole to hole. Um, vein zones two and three are more uh, zones, uh, tens up to tens of meters wide, but of veinlets, sheeted, sheeted veinlets. So, um, uh, so, so we got a uh, vein zone one again. It's a, a combination of uh, most of the quartz being tied up in the meter scale veins, but you do get intervening um, again veinlets that add to the grade. Um, overall widths are again in vein zone one, um, uh, tens of meters. Uh, what we're drilling right now at FMN up to about 40 meters. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so individual vein, veins up to about 20 meters. Um, the overall encompassing uh, vein, vein, veinlet zones of uh, up, you know, up to 30, 40 meters or so. So, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, I think we're pretty much out of questions now. There's there's one last one that I think is, is good to, to end on. Um, you know, what differentiates West Haven from the many other junior exploration companies? And then I'll, I'll let you add on any final thoughts uh, you want to leave with investors uh, before we sign off. Yeah, e excellent question. And um, yeah, I mean, you're, you, uh, at the in fact, our, our location here, we're getting high grade gold off a uh, highway in, in British Columbia, tier one jurisdiction. I think, um, you know, we'll filter out some of the, the companies from that. But, um, you know, we asked, uh, been on calls with, with various analysts and groups the last couple of weeks since we put this resource out. And, um, you know, the question comes, out, you know, a, a million ounces is a start on our initial maiden resource here there there's not too many that that many analysts or or people can tell us a, of a million ounce resource there's there's not many of these anymore and we think we're we're not far or on the verge to making this a you know a multi-million two million ounce deposit here with a little bit more drilling so i i think that certainly sets us apart as well um and, and really just the land package on a on a on a really underexplored uh district scale belt here which uh maybe we don't do a you know a good enough job um you know you know screaming that from the rooftops here but it's it's a very underexplored not just the shovel nose itself but and, and yeah location and uh infrastructure and it's it's been uh um I, I think that's that separates us and the fact we're drilling right now where you know a lot of companies there's certainly no disrespect to anybody in in areas that are more seasonally uh accessible but here we are working in january we worked up until december drilling so it's i think that separates us a lot as well from from uh from other groups and um yeah we're um you know you, you go to the, the town of merit or you go to our, our core facility there where peter often is and um uh, with our our team in place there with uh with the locals involved into the company that's another uh, you know, I think we've done a really, really good job in getting uh, local involvement into the into the company as well, and we're continuing to do that. We're continuing to to add from that. Um, so, yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. If there's any others that you you do want to address that you see, we have uh, a few minutes if you want to. Well, there is one here which I I would I would uh, like I would that I see here, and it says uh, from K E uh, West Haven recently mourns the passing of Ed Ballon. Can you talk about Ed's contributions and and I'll just, yeah, I, I think that's a good, uh, we haven't talked a lot about that and uh, um, Ed battled for a, a few years here and uh, yeah, very uh, 
sad to to lose him here recently and and his contributions are endless in this in this industry in this business uh just from our group alone and all that you know peter touch on when peter first met ed but yeah he's been uh instrumental on this belt i'm not sure we'd be here today talking about this without uh ed having really discovered this in the early 2000s and and not just that he was a you know a, a great mentor to many in this business uh and and really a a legend uh, prospector and, and really just a great guy. So uh, yeah, we're, we're certainly um, saddened, but we're, we're, we're happy that he got to see this resource and um, that he got to see uh, a lot of the success from here. So uh, yeah, Peter, I, maybe you want to say something because uh, I know Peter knows that very well as well. <clears throat> yeah. From the uh, early nineties there um, when it was uh, Fairfield minerals um, working out of uh, the Siwash um, elk deposit, um, at the uh, what northeast of uh, Um we were uh, uh, Fairfield was also drilling in a joint venture with um, Placer Dome on the um, on the Dill project, the Dill, <clears throat> the Dilly, which is now um, operated Kodiak. by uh, <clears throat> Kodiak Copper. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I first got to uh, uh, meet Ed. Um, but Ed was really a, a trailblazer in the in the Spencer's Bridge Gold Belt um, uh, back in the early two thousands. He was uh, it was his follow up work of the um those um anomalous stream sediment samples collected by the bc geological survey um so it was those um those regional uh, uh geochem programs that it was um ed kind of following up on, on these um rgs programs um uh, that um, the bc geological survey were putting out um for the south central bc and yeah he was uh, you know coming up with um some finding the um some really intriguing uh, quartz floats um uh banded uh uh, epithermal uh, uh, quartz vein floats that, that just you know you're running in 40 grams plus you know uh, um, so uh, he kind of that initial work um, really um, started drawing attention to the um, the epithermal potential of um, of the Spencer's uh, Bridge um, a belt here so um, so previously um, you know the um, the Spencer's Bridge, Bridge belt was just these you know belt of Cretaceous um, volcanics that kind of flanked. Uh, the uh, Nicola Belt, uh, you know, on the west side of the Nicola Belt, and 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 by then, you know, South Central BC it was all just the Nicola Belt and all the porphyry copper, um, you know, s- situations uh, happening there. But uh, but what was happening along the to the west of the of the Nicola Belt um, that kind of started, um, you know, with Ed's um, initial uh, trailblazing work there that really started drawing attention that, you know, it's it's not just copper. <laughs> There's certainly some gold potential in in these younger rocks uh, to the west. So. Um, yeah, that he really, um, you know, opened up people's eyes to, you know, what's the potential, you know, for, for, uh, for the the Spencer's Bridge uh, belt, which we now know as the Spencer's Bridge Gold Belt, you know, because of his uh, early pioneering work here. So, um, yeah, yeah. So ultimately, you know, we got to thank uh, a big thank you to Ed there for, you know, uh, recognizing what uh, what we had here. So, um, yeah, and what we're still defining, and you know, so it's his early work that really, um, that we're um, quite, you know. Uh, thankful for and you know um so yeah it's uh is one of his um one of his uh, many legacies uh, you know his work in south central bc here on on the spencer's bridge belt so yeah well, well said yeah um and and taylor is just one more thing here that we we didn't ask on the last webinar and it's a question here from uh, uh about uh, paul mccray our, our recently announced new director to the company and there was a mention here uh there's no evidence of Paul working with um, juniors, and all of a sudden, after 40 years, he joins our board. Any talks with Lundin? And um, no, not not at this point. To be to be frank, uh, I think they're they're pretty focused down uh, there in uh, in South America. But but Bob, uh, um, um, Bob asked a question. Uh, Paul is uh, someone who came about from a, a a friend in connection with one of our other directors. Uh, not many of us knew Paul personally, but uh, he uh, he's he's going to bring a lot of uh, experience and and depth to uh, sort of development into production and and certainly um, vast experience in in ep- these epithermals. He's worked on Fruta del Norte, as as the question asked, and uh, Paul does a lot in in the ESG, which is also something where we're working tirelessly on here and, and kind of behind the scenes, which we'll have more information out on as well. So. Um, if, if, yeah, if that's it, uh, I'd, all, all I'd finish with Taylor's um, lots of results uh, coming out, lots of assays pending still from last year, and uh, we're seeing lots of interesting things here at FMN. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's really 
if, if no other question, that's the way we would end. I see we're coming close to at the end here. Yeah, great. Thank you uh, both uh, very much, Gareth and Peter. Um, you know, great presentation and thank you for, uh, you know, going through all the questions with us. We definitely had a, a lot in on this webinar. So that's that's great that uh, for you to take the time to, to answer those and, and host the webinar today with us. Um, and thank you to everybody on the line uh, for tuning in as well.